Edutrainment Workshops, the insurance industry's leading education and training platform presents Life Insurance, the entry-level series, the products, the underwriting, and the planning applications to position your practice as the premier provider of insurance products in your community. Get on board, get on track, get to where you're going. And now, your Edutrainer, National Insurance Columnist, Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone. I'm Steve Savant, your Edutrainer and Coach. For our Edutrainment Workshop Series, our entry-level introduction into life insurance, and all this week, we're going to be introducing survivorship life, or some people call it, second to die. Today, we're using Lincoln Benefits software. We've been encouraging you all these last couple of months to download their software because we believe it's a great tutorial and you'll be able to go with us page by page. To see their software, just go out to their site, www.lblsales.com forward slash ETW. When you come out to their site, you'll see Eclipse Illustration Software and download it right here where it says Run Installer and then you'll be able to go with us in our tutorial and it really helps the learning process and I think it's where you'll be encouraged to see how really good and easy this is. Not only that, but Lincoln Benefit Life and, their, and of course their parent company, Allstate, has a beautiful reviewing policy page where they have quite a few documents and really good helps and assistance. And I like the Facts of Your Life booklet, which comes in a book as well as it comes in an attachment, an email attachment. If you go out to their site, which is, of course, it's playing right now at the bottom of the screen. It's awfully long, I know, but I, I, that's probably the best way to do it. It's also on our search engine optimizations, the document that's attached to this video. So you could just cut and paste that into your browser and you should be able to get to this. And when you do, you'll also notice prospecting letters and postcards. These are excellent tools. If you say, boy, I don't know about how to develop a marketing campaign, this is a very good beginning. And remember, even though it's already been through compliance with Allstate, if you're with a broker dealer, you're gonna have to have your broker dealer approve the language here. And if you're with an insurance agency that has the same protocols, you'll need to get their compliance to approve it as well. Also, I just want to point out again, if you've missed any of our shows, you really should go back to the beginning. And the reason I bring this up is because at the beginning, we really lay the foundations and, the, and the, really the cornerstones of what we're talking about when we introduce you into life insurance. And so if you need to say, Steve, I'm behind, and if you're coming into this uh, teaching and our workshops today, you should really go back to the beginning because it'll really be helpful because none of the things we're talking about today, you really will have, ne you needed to be in that workshop uh, at the beginning. Now, that's www.brokersalliance.com. As soon as you come on the page, you'll see this big red button, On Demand Videos. As soon as you click it, you, it'll put you right into our archives and you can see all our edutrainment shows and especially in this re regard of this workshop, it's the entry level into life insurance. Now, also, I just wanted to point out, we're giving away the life manual. If you haven't ordered it yet and you've been a regular viewer, all you have to do is write me at thebiz at brokersalliance.com. That's T-H-E-B-I-Z and I'll send you the life manual, including the vocabulary. And we encourage you all, especially if you're coming in late, to go ahead and get this vocabulary, go ahead and set it aside while you're watching the video. And if I ever use language or a word that you say, boy, I don't understand that, or what it was he saying there, please just go right to it and it'll really help you. All right, well, let's just kind of get into it. And today we're gonna go over and I'm gonna show you a quick doc here that you can order. And this is our survivorship life it's kind of a basic doc. And you can order this again at the biz at brokersalliance.com. If you say, I just need a piece, and we, I've been using this for a long time, and it's a really basic piece. The problem with Second to Die back before 1981 is when a married couple had an estate, the transfer from dad to mom, or mom to dad, depending upon who died first, that always what used to be a taxable event. Then the Congress, in their wisdom, developed a thing called the Marital Deduction Act, which passes the estate on from the surviving spouse, which is a great idea, and we've been doing that since 1981. And second to die only pays, or survivorship, only pays on the second death. So when the first person dies, that's it, nothing happens, no death claims are paid, but when the second person dies, and it was really there to meet the estate tax obligation and state obligations for taxes due on a transfer to the state. It's really excellent tool and we use it a lot. And when you look at it, 1981, it's the Economic Recovery Tax Act and it really set up second to die. And we had a actually a foreign Canadian reinsurer that actually invented this. 
And when I came into the business in the 80s, there was really only three players in the entire market. So it's kind of strange to think about, wow, now today, everybody is almost into this. I mean, almost every major carrier, all platforms are shown, every mortality chassis. It just really has developed its own world. Now, when you're looking at this, it has a lot of different issues. And one of the biggest ones is ownership assignment. Now, most people believe that if you, if you know, and it's true, if you hold the life insurance, or especially second to die in your estate, and the death benefit's rather large, and you already have a sizable as size estate with a tremendous amount of assets, you're gonna have to look at this and say, boy, should I own this myself? Should my children own it? But more than likely, should I have an irrevocable life insurance trust? Own this policy. Again, you'll need to talk to your tax attorney, your estate tax attorney, your CPA, somebody that actually knows taxation and trust work. And you can look at these documents and say, should I have this, should I own it inside my estate or should I own it outside my estate? Okay, well, let's, after we do that, let's just look at a few things here. And I, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to go through some basic ideas. And we're gonna go to the whiteboard. There we go. And I just wanna show you a few premises. For example, second to die or survivorship has several mortality chassis. The original mortality chassis, believe it or not, was actually universal life. Current company practice, by the way. Current assumption, oops, let's do an A. Current assumption UL. And then whole life, second to die, par contracts participating, that means they actually give a dividend. Then we started to see guaranteed UL. And then we actually evolved into variable UL. This is all second to die. And then of course we now have indexed UL. Everybody always asks me, Steve, which one's better? It depends upon what you're trying to get done. Let's assume that everything is going to be in an irrevocable life insurance trust and the grantors, the people who have the estate, have already gifted and made their annual premium payments and they have no control over the cash values in a traditional sense. When I look at this, I'm gonna be looking at which pays, which premium do I have to pay the least amount? Because one of the big things about Second to Die is it is a major league leverage scenario. This product has tremendous leverage, discounted dollars as we call it. You're really buying pennies on the dollar, and depending upon the health of the client, you can get tremendous, tremendous economic viability out of this. So a lot of times when I'm looking at this, and I'm looking just for raw death benefit, I might be looking at guaranteed UL, and maybe, maybe par whole life, it depends upon the carrier and the company. These two are much more basic. Now, universal life at the current assumption where interest rates could change and the policy could change, they could be a play, but remember, I don't have a guarantee. So if you're looking for guarantees, it's gonna to have to be in whole life and it's gonna to have to be in guaranteed UL. Some variable products will actually have a guaranteed platform that may go out all the way out to age 90. So you might wanna look at that and indexing now, if you pay a little bit more above their normal minimum premium payments, sometimes you can actually land a guarantee that goes to 90 and sometimes beyond that. It depends upon the payout. But in my game, in indemnification, it's bang for the buck. So if I really want the ultimate leverage, I wanna be able to purchase the cheapest. And right now, it's gonna be pretty much between par whole life, depending upon the carrier, and guaranteed UL. Now, when I look at this, I'm trying to always say, well, which is the best way to go on this? And I'll show you a little bit of leverage. For example, let's say we take a male. And our male is 65. And then let's do a, let's have a female and the female 65. And then let's look at second to die, which is a combination of the male and female mortality rates. Interesting enough, this 65 year old female is actually gonna be somewhere around 58 male, which is how we make our math work. So even though there really are no, in technically, in our terms, for our purposes today, there are really no females in the mortality tables. They're really males. So there's a drop in, in uh, spread probably right now between seven and eight years in the standard tables. Remember, it could be a lot more in super preferred, preferred plus, preferred, standard plus, and standard. 
What that does is that could make joint equal age down here. It could be as low as 56, depending upon the carrier, maybe down to 53. So that's the rate I'm really paying for. So for example, if I did a single deposit, $100,000, and they were both the best preferred non-smoker at 65, for a male by himself, I might be able to get somewhere around $400,000 of death benefit in a single deposit. For a female, I might be able to get $500,000 in a single deposit. But if I use second to die, where the joint equal age is much younger, I might get $600,000 for a $100,000 deposit. So when you look at the leverage, this is a four to one leverage, a five to one leverage, and a six to one leverage. And if this is done correctly, all this money, depending upon how it's owned and how the beneficiaries are set up, all that money can go tax-free to the next generation. Now, it's interesting to note when I, when I say this, it's important to say, wow, when I look at these kind of numbers, the leverage of second to die is really huge. So when I'm looking at this, I'm always trying to figure out, hey, what if I didn't have the most healthiest of clients? Well, when I get into the underwriting tomorrow, we're gonna to talk a little bit about this because really sometimes I have to look at, hey, how, what's the spread between the uh, male and female? What's the actual underwriting offers that they're getting to see which ones are gonna work out the best? Right now, the actual second to die market on the GUL, Guaranteed Universal Life, and the whole life is pretty tight. So you're gonna be able to say, wow, which carrier should I go with if they're all relatively close? So within that framework, when we go to the grids on Wednesday, we'll show you some of the different comparisons and what you're up against so that you can actually look at this and say, this is what I wanna do. Now, when I think about this, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the leverage issue. And again, going back to our basic premise of a male, 65, and he might be non-smoke, and let's say he is standard, and mom, is let's say she's uh, 60 and she's non-smoke but she's super preferred her health and even if she was standard her health is really making this really work because we don't pay the claim on the second death. in fact think about this i'm not aware of any official statistics but basically what i heard back just around the turn of the uh, 21st century we had about, oh, I'm gonna say 26 years of second to die, really out on the street, and we had a product in some format. We probably had less than 500 death claims all in, all, all United States carriers, and they're one of the biggest reasons that some carriers didn't even have a death claim is, the males actually died on time and very close to the 1980 CSO mortality tables, which much of that, of course, was written before 2000. But the females, for whatever reason, lived beyond that. And there was some tremendous, tremendous longevity among females. In fact, when you look at it, most of the nursing homes right now, in fact, the one that's in our, our town in Phoenix, is about eight to nine to one male or female. So you have eight females or nine females to one in nursing homes because the longevity for them are just, just that much more. And remember, I've said this before, Willard Scott says a happy birthday to a handful of Americans that are turning 100. Right now, we issue all the way up to age 90. There's carriers that want to go beyond this. We're already showing joint equal age at an age of 120. When Willard Scott says happy birthday to a handful of Americans, it seems outrageous and really astonishing that people are living into their hundreds now. But really, that's the new demographic of the geriatric community that the actual centurions, or these people turning 100, are now advancing into 105, 110. And several females in the United States are all in their, what we call their 100 teens. Now they're teenagers again, only this time in the century mark. So you want to look at this and to see which way it is. So it could be all over the board, the spread in ages and these two issues of health, which we're going to get into tomorrow. You want to look at this and see which are the, what mechanics work the best. And certain carriers are excellent depending upon how tight the age is and their actual offerings in underwriting because you can really forge a really great indemnification scenario and send money to the next generation for whatever reason that you want to do that into the, one of the most efficient platforms out on the street. This is huge leverage. They call it discounted dollars. If the health is right and the spread in ages, survivorship is excellent. This has been an edutrainment workshop, the educational division of the National Insurance Clearinghouse, the marketing arm of Brokers Alliance 
and sponsored by Lincoln Benefit Life, an Allstate company.